Okay, hi. So today we are going to talk about the nature versus nurture argument. Now we've already spoke about variety in the previous video about reproduction. So in sexual reproduction, we produce the most variety. But can we also get variety in clones? And is all variety caused by our genes? Well, the answer to that is definitely no. And we're going to have a look at why. So nature in this sense Sounds a bit odd, because nature in this sense is not talking about our environment, it's talking about genetics. So nature has meant that we have inherited our genetics from our parents, whereas the nurture part, nurture, is not talking about genetics, it's talking about the environment that we have been brought up in, that we live in. Okay, so they're two separate things which can and will provide variety. Okay, so we, if we have a look at genetics, there are some things which are clearly defined by our inherited genetics. So if two humans have a child, that child is not going to be a frog. So two humans are going to form a human child. So your species is of course completely governed by your genetics. Certain characteristics as well, for example your eye colour characteristics so your natural eye color your natural hair color they are defined by your genetics another thing defined by your genetics is your gender and of course I'm talking there about your physical gender so whether you are male or female anatomically not in terms of your mental state because that is a whole different argument and there are various factors that are involved in that Okay, so genetics are of course very important in governing a lot about us. There are various characteristics which are not governed by genetics. They will be governed by the environment you are brought up in. For example, a physical injury. So if, for example, um, you had an accident and it made you blind, your blindness is not down to your genetics. If the accident meant that uh, something poked your eyes and it meant that you can't see anymore, your environment has clearly led to you not being able to see. It's also well documented, um, if you remember from the medicines video, that uh, deformities were caused in children by the drug thalidomide. So deformities as a result of thalidomide. Now the thalidomide here is what have caused the deformities in the children, not the genetics of the parent. So the parent may be, perf sorry, both parents may be perfectly healthy and wouldn't normally produce a child with deformities, but the, the presence of thalidomide, which is the environment of that child, cause it to have these deformities. And things are not as black and white as this. There are some grey areas where we will have nature and nurture. This is really open for debate because there are a lot of things which people think are purely genetic or mostly genetic. Other people would argue will know their environment as well. One very topical environment which is always in the news is obesity. Okay, obesity. A lot of people will blame obesity on their genetics. A lot of people think that they have inherited characteristics, which means that they will always put on weight. This is true for some people, but it's certainly not true for all people. Um, and your environment, so the food that you take in, um, the amount of exercise that you're doing, they all affect whether you are going to be obese. And so it's a complex relationship between the, your genetics, because some people will inherit fast metabolisms and they can eat awful food and never put on weight, whereas other people will put on weight very quickly. That is your genetics, whereas your environment is the food you decide to eat and the amount of exercise you decide to take part in. So if someone has a slow metabolism, they could still avoid obesity by eating right and doing exercise. Okay, now another one is height. So your height. A lot of people think height is completely genetic and that's not true either. The reason why in a lot of, especially third world countries where there isn't access to the right nutrition for a lot of people, a lot of those people are malnourished and they are also quite short in stature. 
That's because they're not taking in the right amount of food in order to allow them to grow to their full height. Even if they potentially could grow to six foot, they might only grow to five foot six. And that's because they're not eating the right foods to allow them to grow. On the flip side to that, if you had two parents who were both five foot five, are they likely to have a kid who's six foot ten? The answer to that is probably not. There will be some cases where it happens, but probably not. And that means that even if they eat correctly, they're probably not going to be much taller than five foot seven, five foot eight, something like that. Uh, whereas someone else who has two parents who are above six foot, if they eat correctly, they will be able to outgrow that person. So that is a scenario, again, where it is a complex relationship between uh, your genetics and your environment. Now, obviously, what is interesting about this is we can conduct tests in order to see the difference between genetics and environment. And the way we do that, so let's say tests. The way we do that, or the most ethical way to do that, is using plants. Plants. So plants are easy to clone. Easy to clone. And therefore, that means we could have loads of different plants with exactly the same genetics. So we have plant A. Let's just say this is the early plant A. And plant B, which is over here, and they're absolutely identical. So we've got plant A, and we've got plant B. Just put some soil in there as well, make it a bit realistic. Here we go. And there we go. Now let's say... These are obviously separate to each other, so we'll draw a barrier there. Let's say that we give plant B loads of sunlight, loads of sunlight, and, and we give it loads of water. So we allow it loads of rain. This plant is going to be pretty happy, right? There we go. Whereas plant A, we allow it to survive, so we give it a tiny bit of water but we don't really give it much light. And this means that we have the same genetics in these two plants, but very different environments. Now let's say two weeks later, we measure how much these plants have grown. And plant A has grown a tiny bit. So there we go, that's plant A. What's happened to plant B? Well, plant B has had all the nutrients it wants. And plant B is now a monster. There we go. Look at plant B. Plant B is huge. Plant A hasn't really grown, but they are genetically identical. And so that is the difference between the environment and the genetics. Genetics don't always mean that these plants are going to be um, the same. But then what if we were to take two more plants? Let's do this on a new page. So here we go, two more plants. We're going to call them C and plant D. But plant D is genetically slightly different. So it's only got one leaf. There we go. It's only got one leaf there. Whereas plant C is identical to A and B in terms of genetics. Now, this time we are going to put them in identical environments. So identical environments. They both have sunlight and they both have adequate rainfall. So C and D, they both have what they need. And then after two weeks, we come and have a look at them again. Now let's say plant C has done very well, just like plant B, and it's grown, look, there we go, it's a big plant. Now plant D, perhaps the reason plant D only has one leaf is because it's got a genetic defect. Now even though it's been given the same environment, plant D, genetically, uh, has a defect and therefore it stops it growing as much. So we can see plant C is way bigger than plant D in this case. And this is where the uh, the environment has been exactly the same, but the genetics are the limiting factor here. And so that just demonstrates with C and D, the genetics have caused them to look different. Whereas with A and B, the genetics were identical, but we've had a different environment. Okay, and I just want to briefly mention that we have also done studies like this with humans using identical twins. You can study things like height, their weight, and even things like their IQ to test their intelligence. And humans, identical twins, 
have been brought up either in the same environment, so in the same household, or in different environments. And then we've also used identical twins and non-identical twins, so that they are the same age and everything else, but their genetics are different. And then we can have a look at whether height, weight, and IQ are more genetic or more environmental. And that tells us a lot, obviously, about these characteristics and whether they're inherited. Now, the problems with that, of course, are that these experiments on human beings are considered unethical. Is it right to allow an experiment to cause a twin to be separated from its parents? Probably not. Um, so these experiments are not really smiled upon. However, we, can, we have done this in the past and we do have data on it. And so it is an ex interesting experiment in terms of science anyway. Okay, so I think that's about enough there. I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, I hope that's been helpful and that you appreciate now the difference between environmental and genetic characteristics. So nature versus nurture. Uh, if you do have any questions, please do feel free to follow the link and send me a direct email or comment in the box below and I'll try and get back to you. Um, but thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.